Hello guys, welcome to Syndex. I'm Varun, one of the co-founders of the platform. Syndex is an intuitive, affordable and feature-rich email marketing software which we are building with a small team spread across the board. The purpose of this video is to help you get started quickly with the platform and give you an overall view about what all things are possible with Syndex. So let's get started. So doesn't matter whether you are a SaaS company, an education tech company, an e-commerce platform, a professional blogger, a course creator or a services company. Uh, as long as you're online, you will be having a traffic funnel. So you will be getting some visitors on your current website. Finally, as a business, you will have to convert them into customers who pay you dollar value to survive, right? But why will people sort of, how the, how people will convert from visitor to customer is the interesting part. And this is where platforms like Sendex come into picture. So for a visitor to sort of trust you and become a subscriber, which is give the email ID, uh, you may be giving them some of the free tools or software. It may be a free sort of uh, trial period of your software. You may be providing them a free ebook, a case study, a webinar or a content upgrade. And in return of that, your visitor may give the email address. So in order to convert into a subscriber. Now, in order to do so, you may be using these different tools like pop-ups, forms, or landing pages. So if you're doing content marketing or SEO, you may end up using pop-ups and forms to sort of reach out to your visitors at the right moment so that they are ready to give the email address. And if you're running, say, paid ads on Facebook or Google, you may be using landing pages in order to convert them. Now, once you have converted these folks into subscribers, different people may behave differently. Some of them may click your email, some of them may visit your page, some of them may sort of perform specific activities. And based on which you can sort of start grouping your audience based on the tags they have, based on the custom data or custom fields they have. So uh, some of your users may be from US West Coast, others may be from Europe, their genders may differ, the product categories they are interested in may differ, the dollar value they have paid to you may differ. And based on all this information, you can create hyper-targeted segments of this audience. So in order to identify a similar looking group. So people who may have downloaded your ebook and have signed up in the last one month and have at least paid you uh, like $500, maybe a segment of users. Similarly, other segment of users may be folks who haven't opened even a single mail of yours in the last 60 days, right? And all of this is very, very easy for you to do using Sendex. Now, once you have done that, once you have created, once you have sort of grouped your audience, you may be using different types of emails in order to convert them from subscriber to an eventual customer. In order to do so, you may be sending them promotional emails about a sale of a new product. Uh, you may even be sending them weekly newsletters or information about your product updates. And then you may even be using behavior driven auto triggered emails. So if someone has added product to shopping cart but haven't made the purchase, you may send them automated mail after 10 or 15 minutes. Similarly, if a user has say checked out your pricing page and spent 60 seconds on that, you may send them an automated email from your sales guy. So there are a lot of different use cases in which you may use these one off emails to convert your subscriber to customer. Another way to do the same thing is to use drip emails. So rather than using a single email, you may send a sequence of emails spread across multiple number of days to get uh, your uh, subscribers from position A to position B. So typically during a product onboarding, because you have just signed up on Sendex, you will be getting a sequence of emails from Sendex, which helps you get educated on the product and so that we are able to communicate the product value. And that's a drip email sequence which Sendex is sending. Similarly, once you upgrade to Sendex, you may start getting a different email sequence which communicates more value and more powerful things which you can leverage Sendex for your business. And these are like different journeys which we are creating for different types of users based on different tags they have, based on different segments they belong to, right? So, uh, and for you to sort of orchestrate all these, all these things is where sort of automation comes in. So automation is the central piece which orchestrates these different triggers and different actions. So automations typically say, okay, if this thing happens, then I have to perform this action. And the trigger may be someone submitted a pop-up or a form uh, on your blog or your, on your website, and then you may want to send them automated email. A trigger may be someone say signed up for your product and you may want to start a drip nurturing emails in order to convert them into a customer. A trigger may be someone downloaded a case study or like signed up for your webinar and you may want to send them automated emails about that specific event. So all these tools which uh, I have sort of talked about, all the tools right from your pop-ups forms and landing pages in order to convert visitor to a subscriber, all these one of promotional emails or like auto triggered emails, which are for converting subscriber to a customer. 
all these sort of drip emails which you can use for nurturing, remarketing, reducing churn, for upselling your products, all of that are comprised in the Syndex platform and automation acts as a central layer to sort of orchestrate everything. Now, since we have covered it, we'll be going into and seeing the Syndex platform. So now if you are able to see my screen, this is going to be your main central dashboard and you can see there are top four things on the top navigation bar. The first is campaigns, contacts, forms and automations and all these things map very well to, uh, to the discussion which we have had earlier. So let's first go into contacts because that's how we are sort of going to group our audience. So in Sendex, you typically have three major types of contact grouping. The first is list, second is tags and then you have segments. So list and tax are pretty much interchangeable. The only thing is you can have a single opt-in or double opt-in list. So in case of double opt-in list, people can get a confirmation email and only after they sort of accept it, will they be start getting uh, promotional emails or automated emails from your brand or a business. So let's assume that we are building this entire thing for a company called Awesome Inc. And let's call it Awesome Inc. Uh, registered users. So that's the name of the list which I'm giving. So once we have done that, uh, we can sort of import contacts to this list or we can also use API. So Syndex has JavaScript API as well as API SDKs in different languages. We integrate with WordPress and a lot of other different platforms. So you can push that data either manually or you can also use our APIs to do that. So for now, I'm just importing contacts manually and up uploading my CSV file. So once the file has been uploaded, you can see all the columns in my CSV file are shown on the left hand side, right? So this file had four columns, name, email, amount, and date. And on the right hand side, I can map it into syndex column. So like you can see the name and email column is sort of already mapped. And then these are custom fields or custom columns and we could very easily create these columns and map them into syndex. And once we have done that, we are gonna hit submit. So now all these contacts have been added to this specific list as you can see below, okay? And this nifty graph is showing you like uh, how many subscribers you have got in that list. Similarly, you could have very well added these contacts to a specific tag also. Now Syntex platform also shows you which of your list or tags are more effective than others. So you can see percentage of people who have opened mails in a specific list or in a specific tag, right? Which gives you a sense around, okay, uh, which lists are performing better for your business. The third option is around segments. So segment is nothing but a set of and and or conditions which you can sort of create to select a set of folks. So uh, you can select people who are in a specific list, who may have opened your specific emails, who may have clicked links, who may have visited pages. So there are a lot of these conditions uh, based on which you can select a set of people, right? Not just that, you can also do it based on behavior. So if someone has opened your mail or did not open your mail, clicked a specific link or did not click a link, right? Uh, if they have visited a page or based, even based on custom properties, you can sort of create a segment for these folks. So for example, in a account, uh, you can see there are a lot of custom information like when someone joined a company, how many trial days are left, how much dollar value have they paid and you can sort of keep on creating segments based on any such information. So this is how you will be sort of grouping your entire audience. Just below that, uh, under the contact screen, you can also see an option of creating a new custom field. So if you want to map any extra column, like for your business, you may be storing someone's designation or their sort of country code or uh, last event they have attended or last product they have purchased, you can create a custom field for that, right? And these fields can be of type text, number, date, and boolean. So Syndex is smart enough to understand different field types. So once, once we have sort of added this, these contacts into Sendex, uh, like we can sort of go into campaigns. A uh, quick segue I would like to make. So under the settings, uh, you will be able to see your JavaScript code. So this is the API code, which you can sort of leverage. Uh, there's also a documentation for it under help.sendex.io slash API, which is where you can find our documentation for both JavaScript and REST API SDKs if you're planning to integrate. Moving on, now once we have got the data into Syndex, the next thing you, we would like to do is we would like to send these automated campaigns because we want to now convert these folks from a subscriber to a customer. So we may be creating newsletter campaigns which are one-off uh, promotional emails that you may be sending. You can also run an A-B split test with different variations of subject lines and then you can also have these auto-triggered emails or drip emails which are triggered using automation. 
So let's first go and see a newsletter campaign. So let's just say an uh, awesome ink company is sort of going to launch a product in the month of July and we want to sort of send this information to a sort of set of subscribers. So let's call uh, awesome ink uh, July product update. You can have your form name and form email. So it may be say Adam from awesome ink and then you can choose your form email. So it may be Next, you can go ahead and choose a template. So Sendex has a wide selection of templates. You can choose any one of them. We have both a drag and drop editor as well as a plain text editor. Uh, so based on your use case, you can choose any of these uh, templates. So for now, I'm just choosing a simple template like this. Next, we'll be going to the content section and where we can define a subject line. So you can use personalization in your emails. Uh, awesome ink is launching great new products, right? And you can just add some flair to your sort of subject lines by adding emojis and stuff like that, right? To your emails. Now the editor is fairly simple to use. You can sort of add sections, you can sort of uh, have subsections, you can add images, you can have text content. All of that is fairly self-explanatory and like changing, making changes to it is also very, very straightforward. So let's just do it. You can also use merge tags just to sort of personalize the content within your email. Uh, you can also have a fallback over here. So a lot of uh, these type of things are sort of easily possible. Adding images, adding videos, adding your own custom HTML, adding CTAs, all these options you have. You can also sort of have a quick preview of the email content. So you can see how it's going to look in desktop mode and on the mobile mode. There are a lot of advanced personalization options which I'm sort of not really discussing but you can also have these custom dynamic blocks in your emails if you would like. It's just taking some time to render. Yeah so now this is the desktop mode of the campaign and similarly you can see the mobile view also. Uh, if you're still working on it you can save it uh, as a draft or you can send a test mail to yours and once you're happy with your campaign we can move to recipients which is where we can select people in a specific list or a tag or a segment to whom you, we want this mail to go. So because we had create, we want to send this mail to all our registered users, we can select folks in a list. Now Syntex over here is different because if you're selecting say people in multiple list tags or segments, uh, Syntex ensures that okay people don't get duplicated emails and one person although they may be present across multiple lists or tags or segments, they will get only one mail. You can also have exclusion lists, so if you want to sort of exclude, say, your paid customers or people who have purchased product X or people who have done certain activity, you can exclude them. So these may be people who did not open your earlier mail or click the link also. Next, we'll be going to schedule. You can choose a date and time when your campaign will go out. You can choose your own time zone in which you want it to go out, or you can decide to send it immediately using send now option. Below here, you have two really interesting options. The first is boost my campaign performance. So Syntex is smart enough to know that uh, your users may be in different time zone. And if you select this option, Syntex will send it based on their local time zone. So people in US West Coast will get your mail in US West Coast time. People on, say, in Japan will get it in Japan time. People in London will get it in London time. People in, say, Singapore or, say, Bangalore will get it in their local time. The other option is smart sense. So Syntex is also smart enough to know at what time of the day people are more likely to open your mail. So if you're sending mail only to say folks in uh, New York, then based on whether they end up opening their mails early in the morning at 6 a.m. or whether they open their mail at 10 a.m. or whether they open their mail at 2 p.m., they're more likely to get a mail at uh, increasing the likelihood of them opening it. Another option that we have is tracking campaign click report on Google Analytics. So using Sendex, if you enable it, you will be able to track your campaign performance on Google Analytics. And once you have sort of done that, you can like submit your newsletter campaign or, or if you're still working, you can save it as a draft. So this is around the newsletter sort of campaign. Once your campaign has been sent, you can sort of see detailed reporting around it. So you will be able to, like, which is where you can sort of check it. Uh, and you can also sort of resend the same campaign to an opener. So suppose if you have sent a campaign to 5,000 folks and only 1,000 people opened your campaign, with a single click, you can resend the campaign to 4,000 people who did not open your earlier campaign. Now let's have a quick look at the report. So 
A report has a lot of sections. It shows you number of people to whom campaign was sent, people who opened or clicked, unique people who opened or clicked. Sendex also shows you a geo level distribution. So from which all countries uh, did people open your campaign? You can also see exactly who opened your campaign, who clicked your campaign, how many times did they open, how many times did they click, and you can decide to go deeper in a specific contact. So you can see not just the name and email of the person, but all the custom data which is associated with them under custom fields. And on the right hand side, you can see all the tags associated with the person, all the lists they are a part of, all the campaigns which have been sent to them in the past, and all the drip sequences which have been running for them. The timeline view shows you a linear view of how and when this contact got added, what mails were sent to them, what mails they opened, links they clicked, pages they visited. So it gives you a broader understanding about the activities which a typical contact of yours is doing. So Sendex is also GDPR compliant, so you can delete a contact, unsubscribe them if they request you. There will be unsubscribing, which will any which will be contained in all the emails. Below in the report, you can see all the links which have been clicked the most, and you can also see a heat map report of your campaign, giving you a visual indicator around which CTS people are clicking more. So you can see, okay, this section which has a lot of red is the section where pe most people are clicking my links. And there are some of the other reports which shows you till which day people keep on opening your mails, what devices and what type of mail clients they are using. So let's move on to next type of campaign. So after newsletter, we'll have a quick look at AB split test campaign. So AB split test campaign is very similar to your newsletter campaign. The only thing which varies is in defining the variations. So AB variations are essentially different subject lines. So like many times you may not be sure which subject line is going to perform better. So suppose say you are giving a Black Friday discount. Uh, say a 50% discount across all your products. You may decide to word the subject line in different ways and each of them may perform differently. So let's call it 50% off across uh, all our products for next 24 hours. Okay. And you can sort of use emojis and let's say Black Friday sale. Right. Uh, the second subject line may be Black Friday Bonanza, prices slashed by half for next 24 hours, hurry now. Okay. And we don't know which of these subject lines will have sort of uh, like better results. So in order to do so, we can sort of let data decide. So like a similar newsletter campaign, we'll be choosing a sort of a template with which we want to sort of send we will be defining the content section like if you are, if you want to sort of tweak the content of the email and then this is the part where sort of uh, ab split test campaign differ from a regular newsletter campaign so you will be choosing folks uh, who will be getting it so in our case we will choose all our sort of registered users but you will say okay 10 percent of your audience will get each ab subject line variation so suppose if you have a list of 100k folks so 10k folks will get your subject line one and another 10k will get subject line two and then syndex will wait for a day and see which subject line leads to better performance right and will sort of pick that subject line and send it automatically after a day to the remaining 80 percent of your audience so ab split tests work very well if your sort of uh, subscriber list is at least 10,000 plus folks and it will, like we have seen it, to give tremendous results. Now, we have so far covered newsletter and AB split test campaign. The other type of campaigns which we have are drip campaigns. So, because you have already sort of signed up on Sendex, you will start seeing, you will be getting a set of automated emails, right? These emails go one after the other. So, you may, by now, you may have already sort of got a couple of emails from, from us. Uh, and so, th this is essentially a drip campaign which is sort of running. So let's have a quick look at the drip campaign. So you can see this is a sequence of emails which which is sort of defined one after the other. Right? And the purpose of this campaign is to sort of get you from position A to position B. They are to help you educate, to educate you about the product. And so uh, whether you are a blog, whether you are a SaaS company, a tech company, you can create drip sequences to nurture your audience or to get them purchase your product or to upsell product or to like uh, get people become active on your product or to stop churn or to generate referrals. So there are a lot of different use cases of it. So let's go ahead and sort of quickly create a drip campaign. So we are just going to call it Awesome Inc. Uh, onboarding. And you can have your form name and form email. 
and then sort of your first email may be say something like uh, welcome to or something And uh, you can sort of make the status as active. You can sort of change the number of days after which second email goes. So you can say, okay, the second email name be how this company uh, grew by 233, 244% using awesome. Okay. The third email may be uh, three things to know to make best use of awesome. So all these are dummy subject lines. I'm pretty sure many of you would be having way more creative subject lines. Uh, the content for each of these emails, you can sort of individually change uh, to whatever you would like it to be. So let's just pick this template for the third email. And you can see, right, I can, I have full control over after how many days do I want to send the third email. You can also tweak it whether you want to send it after a few hours, after a few minutes, all of that. Uh, another interesting thing is you can exclude certain people from getting your email. So for example, say the fourth email may be automated promotion which we are sending. So it may be 30% off across all our products for next 24 hours. right? And you can exclude all your paid people, people who have already purchased product from you from receiving this email. right? So this is how you can use automated nurturing to sort of make best use uh, for your business. And once you have created this entire sort of email sequence, we can go to schedule and we can say, okay, this sequence should run at 9.30 a.m. in our preferred time zone. But you can also use Boost My Drip campaign performance feature. So if you are getting a lot of people subscribing from different time zones, then you can use Boost My Drip campaign performance. And once we know in which time zone our particular user is, Sendex will send the mails at 9.30 a.m. in their local time zone. You can also choose skip weekends and if you want to track replies or if you want to track campaign click report on GA, you can select these different options. Once we have done that, you can sort of use the trigger condition. So, so far, if you will realize, we have just created a strip sequence. We haven't said who would be getting it when they will be sort of receiving this entire sequence, right? So uh, all this orchestration of drip happens using automation. So this is a drip is essentially just a content flow. So let's just go ahead and sort of submit it. And once we have done that, we will be moving to the automation rule to, to state when this drip should start. So this is our entire email sequence that we have created. Now let's go to the automation rule. And automations are nothing but if this happens, then perform this action. So every automation has some trigger and then you have some actions. So start awesome ink. Uh, nurturing right so this may be sort of a automation sequence and you can say okay when people sort of subscribe to a list or when they get added a tag you can start this entire automated sequence if you recall these tags can be added using apis you can also decide to sort of manually import them uh -huh. so you can choose an action of adding them to uh, to a drip campaign right and we can sort of create this rule. So now if we sort of add uh, any user uh, active tag, automatically this drip sequence will start running for them. The use cases of automations are like enormous. You can think about like when someone is uh, say, someone's opens your newsletter campaign, when someone clicks a link, when someone say visits a specific page of your website, when someone submits uh, any of the forms and forms are something which we are going to cover in the later section. Uh, you may want to send them an automated email or you may want to tag this audience or you may want to sort of notify your sales team or you may even want to call a webhook endpoint, right? Uh, Sendex also integrates with a lot of other solutions. So like not just with Sendex, like if say someone uh, makes a payment on your Stripe, you can automatically start a drip sequence for them. If someone say, uh, if someone becomes a lead from your Insta page or Intercom or PayPal or Shopify or any of these different platforms, you can do specific actions on Syndex, right? And so this is where sort of power of Syndex platform starts uh, coming to the fore. So we are sort of adding more and more integrations and we have integrations with Pipedrive, Demo, Instapage, ClickFunnels, Teachable, SamCard, WooCommerce, Shopify, etc. And you can sort of leverage them in very, very interesting ways. The last and the most important type of trigger that you have is essentially a segment based trigger. So you can essentially create a segment of all people who may have signed up in the last one week, have at least three or four web sessions on your platform, 
uh, and haven't converted into a paying customer, and you can start automated drip sequences for them. You can similarly create a segment of all people who may have performed, uh, say, who have purchased products worth more than thousand dollar from your platform and have, uh, say, uh, start send them an automated mail after ten minutes. You can create a segment of people who have, uh, say, signed up on your platform, checked your pricing page, and you may want to send an automated email to them, right? So segment-based triggers can be very, very powerful, and you can use them for remarketing, re-nurturing, uh, getting sort of inactive users converted into active users, upselling to your current paying customers, etc. And they all of this will run on in the autopilot. So uh, another sort of interesting thing around the actions is you can sort of remove people from a specific drip, and you can add them to a different drip. So suppose if when someone becomes a paying customer, you may want to remove them from a regular onboarding drip and you may want to add them to a different drip. And this is how you can create like really complicated journeys based on sort of your business use case. Right. So let's just pick this. Okay. So you can say, okay, if someone gets added a specific tag, say they may have converted into a paying customer, you may want to perform this activity. Hmm. So you'll have to sort of create that tag, uh, let's say, when they have downloaded an ebook, right? So I believe a lot of possibilities, a lot of sort of different ideas would have already started coming to your sort of mind. And this is how you can use automations and drip campaigns. The last type of sort of campaign is uh, what we call an auto-trigger campaign, and they're very similar to um, like your regular newsletter campaign. Just that adding, rather than sending them manually, you will be sort of triggering them using automation. So like a regular campaign, you will be sort of creating this entire uh, flow. Like you will be defining your template, you will be sort of creating uh, the content. But similar to a drip campaign, you will be using automation to sort of orchestrate. And as you can see, this campaign is sort of using a plain text editor. So if you have your own HTML with you, you can sort of use a plain text editor. A quick detour over here, you can go to settings and you can change your editor type if you would like. So under preferences, you can change your editor types. Okay. Now, uh, so far we have covered contacts, campaigns, and automations. Forms is the last and perhaps one of the most interesting parts of Syndex. So uh, Syndex platform provides you three different types of forms, uh, like pop-ups, embedded forms, and landing pages, which you can use for sort of collecting leads or which you can use for getting people to a specific call to action. And they are sort of the conversion elements which can help you sort of uh, control your post-click experience. So when people sort of click, like the purpose you are sending mails is for people to get to a specific action and that action for your business may be someone converting into a paying customer, that action may be they purchasing a book, they may, for them to sort of sign up for a webinar, there may be different sort of use cases which you have, right? And this is where sort of pop-ups, embedded forms and landing pages of Syntex sort of come together. So let's go ahead and sort of create a simple pop-up. Uh, for your website. So it may be, say, uh, sign up for a webinar. And you can see that you can have different types of pop-ups. You can have an email collect pop-up or you can have a call to action pop-up. That's up to you. Right now, I'm just showing you an email collect pop-up and you have access to all these different beautiful themes. You can decide to choose any one of them for your use case. So let's just go ahead and choose this template. Next, in the content section is where you can sort of define your content. So so you will be able to sort of look at the preview of uh, whatever sort of theme you have chosen. So guys, the last and perhaps the most powerful type of automations which Syndex has are segment-based automations. So you can essentially choose, like when someone gets added to a segment or removed from a segment, they should be sent an automated drip email or they, send, they should be sent an automated auto-trigger campaign or they should be added a tag, right? So you can create a segment of all people who may have signed up in the last one week, have at least three to four web sessions and have at least paid you guys $100. Or you can create a segment of people with whom, uh, who may have signed up in the last six months but haven't converted into a paying customer, right? And you can use these segment-based automations for remarketing to your audience, re to them, to sort of upsell to them, cross-sell products to them, right? You can, for example, create a segment of people whose birthday is about to come in the next 10 or 15 days and start automated drips in order to get them purchase products from you. So a lot of different use cases are there for using segment-based automation, right? 
So the last section, so far we have covered contacts, campaigns and automations. The last section which we are going to cover are forms. So Sendex has three major types of forms, pop-ups, embedded forms and landing pages. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, pop-ups and embedded forms are like really valuable if you are using it on your website or on your blog. Uh, if your company is invested more on the content marketing or SEO and you can sort of think about it, how do you convert your website visitors into sort of subscribers. Uh, whereas landing pages may be more useful if you're sort of planning to run say paid ad campaigns like Facebook or Google ad campaigns or if you're sort of doing a webinar and you want to sort of have a product launch page. So in those use cases your sort of landing pages may become more relevant. So let's first go ahead and sort of create a new pop-up. So the interesting thing about Syndex pop-ups is uh, like you can sort of uh, have different types of pop-ups. So it may be say for collecting email or it may even be a call to action pop-up and we'll sort of go through them in a while. You then select which template you want to sort of choose and there are sort of literally lot loads of templates uh, which you can choose for your sort of pop-up. So let's pick this template. So it's a full page whether you want a hello bar, slider, modal, all of these templates are there. Next we'll be going to the content section. And this is where you can quickly sort of change the content of your sort of pop-up. So it may be uh, say webinar with me right and then you can sort of add a countdown timer if you want just to sort of create some type of urgency uh, for the pop-up and you can customize each and every part of it so if you want a bigger font if you want to change the color if you want to sort of change the indentation all those things are very very easy for you to sort of tweak it a uh, couple of other interesting things, uh, you can sort of also personalize the content that someone is seeing on your uh, pop-up. So you can sort of use, for example, first name of the people, right? Uh, and the reason Sendex is able to do this is because we set up a cookie. So if any person has ever clicked the link in your email, we know who they are, right? And based on which the content of the that they'll be seeing on the pop-up may differ. So what this allows is you can have a custom coupon code for people who are your paying customers. You can create, you can showcase them a pop-up about the last product which they purchased or the last product they saw, right? And you can sort of give very, very targeted offers to your audience. Another sort of very interesting thing which Sendex has is around uh, like what type of form fields you can collect. So not only uh, can you sort of collect uh, say just the email field, but you can sort of also collect other type of fields. For example, if you want to say, have the phone number you can sort of do that right and you can map them into a custom field or phone number so you have all these custom fields uh, and you can map any field into a specific custom field so let's just pick phone number you can also have drop down so for example if during your webinar you also want to understand the industry right so you can give a couple of options to these folks and on the right hand side what you're saying is you are mapping them to specific tax Right? So you can create a tag against SaaS industry, you can create another tag for e-commerce and based on which people will be tagged separately. So not only are you collecting leads, but you're also segmenting and enriching the data present against each of these leads. And if you just think about the automation part, based on which tag, which option these people are choosing, a different automated drip can start for them or a different lead magnet can go for them. Right? So there are literally a lot of different use cases around how you can sort of leverage this, uh, like a pop-up, like a field type options like drop downs or check boxes. And uh, uh, you can sort of make this thing like really, really interesting. Okay. So now once we have sort of designed uh, this pop-up, the next thing which we like to sort of control is the behavior. Uh, a quick thing prior to that, you can also have your own custom CSS. So if you think that you may want to sort of make custom changes to Sendex CSS, you can do that. Next, let's go to the behavior section. This is where you can control with what type of animation uh, this pop-up will appear. You can control what will the position of the pop-up will be, when it should be displayed, whether you want to show it on exit intent, whether you want to trigger it based on how much someone has scrolled, whether you want to trigger it based on time spent, whether you want to have a content upgrade so that only when people click a button this pop-up is shown. You can also control the frequency at which the pop-up will be shown. So if someone has already seen your pop-up, you can decide to show them only after three days, right? Or you want to show them on new browser session. You can control when this pop-up should be stopped displaying. So if someone has already subscribed or has already seen your pop-up X number of times, you can stop displaying it. You also have full control over the targeting option. 
So this is where sort of things are interesting because you can now show a different pop-up to people who are your anonymous visitors. You can show a different pop-up to people who are already your identified contacts or subscribers. And you can also show a very targeted pop-up for people based on a specific tag. So let's think about a specific use case. So suppose if you are a professional course creator and if someone has purchased your course A, you don't want to sort of give them an offering to purchase course A. You may want to show them an offer to purchase course B. Right. Similarly, if you are an e-commerce company and someone has purchased a product in, say, electronics category, you want to sort of show them a pop-up asking about offers in electronics category and not about a totally different category. Right. So you can have very, very personalized uh, these CTAs. Similarly, for a SaaS company, you may want to show someone who has already purchased your annual plan a pop-up to upgrade for biannual or for three-year plan. If someone's just a subscriber, you may want to show them a pop-up to sort of purchase your annual plan at a 20% discount. So there are a lot of different use cases in which you can use these targeting options. You can even control on which all pages these pop-ups will appear. So for example, you can show this specific pop-up on category pages or on your pricing page or on your demo pages. And under the success action, you can say, okay, all the leads which you are getting from these pop-ups need to be added to a specific list. You can also control the post success uh, experience. So you can sort of redirect leads which are coming to a specific page. Uh, and post that, you can sort of, once you have done that, you can sort of submit your pop up form. So, in order for these pop ups to appear on your website, you just need to add this JavaScript code. You also get a hosted uh, option to sort of show them. And suppose tomorrow, if you don't want this pop up to appear, you can always sort of uh, convert them, their status as false, and sort of save it. So once you have sort of, this pop-up is running live on your website, you will be able to see a lot of analytics for it. You'll be able to see number of people who have seen it, number of people who have completed the action, and you can sort of see all the leads whom you have received from a specific pop-up. Okay. Uh, Similar to pop-ups, we also have embedded forms, which are more in line in nature. So if you are writing, say, content, if you have created some content, you can sort of have these inline forms to collect leads. So you can have these inline forms to for a call to action. So they like we also have a WordPress integration. So if you're on your WordPress blog, you can sort of use it. But pretty much a sort of pop-up and form solution integrates with any third-party software like Wix, Postgres, uh, Ghost themes, WordPress themes, whatever you are using. So you can sort of choose one of these themes. And this is a call to action pop-up. So this does not ask you to sort of give the email. And you can customize what fonts going to appear based on, you can sort of match them with your sort of website brand. Uh, you can control each and every part of it. So suppose if you want to change the color, right? you can do it if you want to change the button. Uh, formatting you can sort of do that you can change the radius of your buttons you can change the color and all those various customization options are present making it very very easy for these pop-ups or cts to match your brand like unlike pop-ups uh, like the embedded forms they don't interrupt a user so once you sort of create them you will get a short line code a code like this so this is something which you can sort of add at any place in your Blog. So, for example, if you go to, let's have a quick look at Sendex blog. And now over here, let's go to one of a blog post, like say this one. So, if you'll scroll down, you will you will be able to see that uh, we have these different CTAs. We are using these inline forms. So, this is an example of an inline form which is appearing. Uh, in your blog, right? Asking people to collect leads. Similarly, you will see an example of uh, like uh, pop-ups or content upgrades also in our blog. So let's go to another blog option. And over here, there's a you will sort of if you'll scroll down, you'll find a call to action asking people to sort of download this entire checklist. So this is an example of inline form, and you can also see. Uh, okay, let me quickly find this. Let me just scroll down. It is somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so this is another example of a form which we have. And uh, again, in line form. Okay, so here, let me quickly check back. 
I believe this is one of the blocks which has a content update. So yeah, so for example, this is a content update. So if someone clicks on it, you can see this entire pop-up appears and it is asking people to give their email. So you can use these content updates, pop-ups and embedded forms in different ways to sort of get more and more leads. Now, uh, just to sort of tie together things, people who are sort of coming from your blog or who are sort of giving you like uh, upgrading these content upgrades or swipe files or subscribing for a webinar, all these leads, they are getting pushed to a specific list or you can sort of also uh, have a trigger as when someone submits a lead via pop-up and you can send an automated campaign to these folks, right? So for example, when someone becomes a blog subscriber, you may want to sort of share over the first few emails about who you are, why you started the blog and some of your top blog posts and maybe about a few pictures around your free course or like some freebies, right? Just to build that relationship with the subscriber. So, so far we have covered pop-ups and embedded forms. The last type of forms which we have are landing pages. So landing pages are full-blown pages which are hosted on uh, Amazon CDN. Uh, you can use them for your webinars, for course launches, for upselling a product. So let's just do for uh, a course launch, right? Uh, so SEO course launch. Under the design, you have like a lot of these very targeted landing pages for upcoming webinar, list growth, courses, ebooks, etc. You can choose any one of them. So let me just pick one of them. And once I have done that, very similar to how you create email, you can sort of tweak each and every part of this landing page. Now, the interesting thing is you can also sort of have your forms over here. So I can add a custom HTML block and then under the plugin section, I can create my own custom forms. Right? So your forms can be simple, it can be complicated, that's up to you. You can even use Sendex embedded forms and copy paste that HTML over here if you would like. So you can see, okay, this form will appear. Uh, another interesting thing in your landing pages is you can also have your custom CSS and custom JavaScript. So if you want to have Facebook or Google remarketing pixel, you can add them. If you want to have a custom CSS in your landing pages, you can do that. And under the success section, you can see, okay, all the leads which you are getting from this landing page, you want to add them to a specific list. And you can also have your upsell pages. So like once lead has sort of submitted details on this page, you can redirect them to another page. And once you're ready, you can sort of submit your landing page. So uh, once you've done that, you can access this page quite easily uh, from your landing page section. So this is, for example, a totally hosted page on CDN and uh, this do these domains can be own custom domain. So this is a full blown page and all the leads are going to a specific list and you can start automatic nurturing sales. So, so far we have sort of talked about how uh, all the four sections of Sendex, which is forms, contacts, campaigns, and automations. And this is how all of them sort of come together. And you can use all these tools to sort of convert your visitors to subscribers and then your subscribers to paying customers or upsell them. The last part of the Sendex platform is the dashboard and which is like essentially telling you the reporting. So on the dashboard section, you can see like the performance of your last campaign. You can see, okay, over the last 30 days, how many contacts have been added, mail sent, opened and clicked. And you can analyze this data based on any custom time frame. So it gives you a sense around, okay, how your entire email marketing operations are working, both from a lead gen angle as well as from email performance angle. And uh, so this sort of broadly covers mo most aspects of Sendex. There are a few other things around, like uh, for you, you having the ability to create sub accounts on Sendex, which you can access from this drop down. You can also invite multiple team members and assign them different roles like admin and contributors. If you are working with, say, a third party vendor or a freelancer, you can assign them contributor roles so that these people are not able to download data or see your contacts information. You also sort of have access to some of the other things. So you can access your billing section from over here. You can tweak the preferences section from over here and you can see all the integrations which are active in your account from over here. Right? And so we have like Zapier integration with which you can integrate Syndex with more than 2000 plus marketing and sales platforms. So a lot of other sort of capabilities, uh, you can sort of be able to integrate Syndex with a lot of other third party softwares. This broadly covers the entire extent of Syndex platform. I think that you loved it. If you have any feedback, just drop me a mail at varunathsyndex.io. Would love to know uh, what features you like, dislike, what are sort of your thoughts, what features would you guys want because we are constantly improving the platform. And the only way to do it is like uh, with your feedback. I hope that you will sort of enjoy your stay with Sendex and hopefully convert into a customer because whatever, like how good we are, we are sort of not able to convert you from a visitor to subscriber and subscriber to a paying customer. 
Uh, also, a support team is really responsive. You can use the chat or phone or sort of email to reach out to a team. Um, and yeah, have a great day. Hopefully, like Syndex will be fruitful for your business and we'll be able to help you take it to the next level. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.